Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta and I am a cardiologist in York and um, I'm at the moment in Amsterdam uh, because I went to Barcelona for a conference and I've now, <coughs> I was waiting at Amsterdam airport. So I've um, checked into this place called Utel, which is um, well worth doing if you ever happen to be in Amsterdam because um, it's nice and quiet and I thought uh, as I had the time I would do a video on the subject of palpitations in athletes uh, and this is a question I get asked a lot because a lot of people are very conscious of their health they try and do a lot of exercise and um, um, often they complain of ectopic beats or palpitations and then they contact me and they say well why is that happening you know i'm looking after myself i do a lot of exercise and the truth is that palpitations are very common in um, athletes particularly highly proficient highly competitive athletes so people who are doing a lot of endurance um, training uh, you know cyclists runners um, and and there's it's very interesting and I wanted to just talk you through why uh, uh, this happens. So palpitations are common in athletes. They generally, they generally don't signify any danger, um, but the nature of the training um, results in some changes that occur within the heart. And I wanted to talk you through them, okay? So what happens is with endurance training, particularly if you're doing a lot of cycling or if you're running to a very high level, what you're you're asking a lot of your heart okay your 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 body needs a lot more blood and there are various things that happen so as to allow the heart to try and get that blood around um, the first thing to say is that if you are doing a lot of exercise uh, then uh, your you know in excess then what the first thing that happens is you are constantly depriving your body your your muscles of oxygen okay and that's why they hurt okay so in the initial stages when you're exercising your muscles start hurting when you're exercising because they're lacking oxygen uh, and the body doesn't really like being deprived of oxygen and because it doesn't like being deprived of oxygen it reacts and the reaction is called inflammation. So excessive exercise, like no exercise, is inflammatory. Moderate exercise is anti-inflammatory. But the very fact that you're constantly depriving your muscles and et cetera of oxygen uh, by asking so much of them uh, is a very inflammatory process. And inflammation, we know, increases the frequency of ectopics. Uh, and that is because you are releasing all sorts of stress hormones, cortisol, etc., and that can uh, adrenaline, and that can uh, cause the heart to become more irritable. So, undoubtedly, one of the commonest, one of the important reasons why people get um, more palpitations, particularly um, when they've done, when they're doing a large block of endurance training, or just after they finished doing a, a block of endurance training is because of the inflammation that that excessive amount of training has induced all right that's the first thing the second thing is that as you continue to do that your heart has to adapt in a way so as to allow the heart to get more blood around because the body is asking for more blood and there are a few things that happen okay the first thing is that your vagal tone goes up so your heart rate starts slowing down and the reason it slows down is this that the heart when it the, the longer the the slower the heart the longer the heart has to fill with the with blood and therefore the more the heart fills with blood the more blood it is able to pump around so slowing the heart is a natural thing the heart rate coming down is a natural thing because it allows more blood to, to fill within the heart and therefore with each heartbeat the heart is able to pump more blood around the body and this is and also you get this thing called vagal tone okay so the heart starts slowing down and if you see any athlete uh, you know particularly olympic style athletes anyone like that their heart rates are very very slow much slower than normal people and that is purely because they have this high vagal tone their heart slows down as an adapt 
as an adaptation to the um, requirements placed on it and the heart with because it's slowing down has more time to fill and therefore because it's filling with more blood it's able to pump blood out uh more blood out so that's one of the adaptive mechanisms however what tends to happen is that <clears throat> there's two things okay as the heart slows down more and more and more uh what tends to happen is you start getting you you can drop your heart below the intrinsic rate of what your natural god-given pacemaker is designed at and if you haven't had a chance to look at my uh video on the vagus nerve then it's worth doing that because basically what happens is your heart has the capability of firing impulses from all over the place okay but there is an intrinsic rate which the natural pacemaker of the heart beats at and because it beats at that it it beats at that it keeps all the other irritable areas at bay but if you suppress your heart rate below your intrinsic rate you will get more ectopic so that's another reason why people get ectopic heartbeats and in fact what we know is that um, their, their palpitations tend to be more at night and the reason it's more at night is because the heart drops the heart rate drops even further at night so um, so that's why people athletes get more palpitations at night because they already have a slow heart rate but then when they go to sleep at night the heart rate falls even lower than the intrinsic rate that was determined by the pacemaker or is supposed to be um, is supposed to be normal if you are dropping the heart rate even below that then you're going to get more ectopics because other areas uh, other than the pacemaker will then be able to fire and with each ectopic you're not going to pump out as much blood so people with athletes tend to get this nocturnal uh, pvcs pacs they get nocturnal atrial fibrillation all right that's that's the second thing all right the other thing to say is that sometimes when you're dropping the heart rate down that low often uh, you are unable to necessarily get it up later on in life often it is uncommon for athletes later on endurance athletes highly competitive athletes to require pacemakers later on so that's another thing just worth bearing in mind the third thing to understand is that when the heart is filling up with blood because you are slowing the heart down. The heart is filling up, okay? So it's filling up with blood and the blood is pumping out. And you continue to do that. Increasingly, what happens is the heart starts stretching more and more and more. And at a certain point, it starts stretching beyond. So I always say that the heart is like a, a bag of rubber bands. You know, you stretch it and it pumps more effectively. You stretch it further, it pumps even more effectively. But at a certain point, you start stretching it and it starts to weaken like a rubber band. You stretch it beyond a certain limit and it loses its elasticity. So what tends to happen in people who are endurance athletes over a period of time, what can happen is that um, you're stretching the heart, you're stretching the heart and you start the heart starts weakening over a period of time and we know that um, in the tour de france there was some there was a study where it showed that quite a large proportion of athletes cyclists in the tour de france were pumping out you know their heart was slightly weaker than normal um, and that is purely because of the adaptations that the heart has had to make to cope with what they're asking of it um, the other thing then to understand also is that the, when the heart starts stretching more, it becomes more irritable. So you're going to get more PVCs. Also, the atrium, the atria is pumping into this heart, but because the heart is stretching, there's more pressure on the atrium. And because the atrium starts dilating and the atria becomes irritable, and that's why people get PACs as well. So you get PVCs and PACs. And the more PACs you get, as you get more and more PACs and the, uh, the atria start dilating more and more, you develop atrial fibrillation. And that's what a lot of people, a lot of athletes get. They get this nocturnal atrial fibrillation, which, can, uh, which has different mechanisms, inflammation being one, two, the stretch of the left atrium being the other, second, and the third is the dropping of the vagal tone. Um, so those are the um, the mechanisms by which um, uh, palpitations are generated in athletes and athletes tend to get pvcs a lot of pacs 
and atrial fibrillation, all right? Uh, I think if you are a competitive athlete, it is really important to go and get checked out and go and see a cardiologist and at least have a heart scan to make sure you're not carrying any other abnormalities because we know that there is a small proportion of people who have inherited cardiomyopathies or inherited uh, electrical disturbances of the heart. And if you put the heart through extreme stress, as in during competitive sports, then things can misbehave. So it's always worth, if you're getting palpitations, to go to your uh, GP and ask him to refer you to a cardiologist. The cardiologist will certainly want to do an ECG. He will certainly want to do an echocardiogram. And he will, of course, want to capture your symptoms on a monitor. And after that, they may want to do more tests like an MRI scan if you're getting a lot of palpitations. If you black out um, uh, during exercise, then it is absolutely mandatory. You should definitely go and see a cardiologist and you should see a cardiologist soon. You shouldn't wait six months on the NHS to go and see a cardiologist. You should go and try and get, get one as soon as possible uh, because that can sometimes signify danger. Again, if you also, if you are an athlete and you have a family history of premature sudden death, okay, then it is vital that you get checked out uh, before indulging in uh, extreme sports, extreme uh, endurance activity. Um, what works for athletes? I suppose the first thing to say is that it's always important to realize that, you know, it is not natural to put your body through excessive exercise. And we live in an era where, you know, people are very competitive and they want to take it one step further. But at a certain point, your body will suffer and there will be long-term consequences of that. And so if it is not something that is your profession or if it is not something that, if it's something that you can do without, uh, then it's always nice to not put your body through that extreme level of stress. Of course, it's very difficult for athletes because athletes, that's, you know, particularly competitive athletes because that's their profession, that's their profession, their livelihood depends on it. Uh, but there are other people that I know who are just, you know, wanting to get fit and then they take it a bit further than just getting fit and they want to be, they want to push themselves and they want to take it to the next level. In that setting, I think, well, you know, if your life does, if your if your livelihood doesn't depend on it, then just cut back if you can, uh, because uh, extreme exercise is never very good for the heart. Um, Detraining works. So if uh, you're getting a lot of ectopy and you step off the training, you uh, detrain for a certain number of months, then the PVCs and the atrial fibrillation will get less. Okay. Um, the third thing to say is that um, it's always good to supplement with magnesium because uh, we know magnesium is a natural anti-inflammatory and we don't get as much of it. And if you haven't had a chance, please have a look at my magnesium video and that will help. So I hope this video gives you some insight into why PVCs, PACs, atrial fibrillation is more common in athletes. Um, and as I say always that, you know, uh, your body likes things to be done in moderation, all right? So moderation is good. Extremes of anything is not great for the body, all right? So, um, but of course, I know it's good for, uh, you know, I, I think it's good for inner confidence and makes people feel very good. But for the body, it does take its toll, all right? So here are some details about me. Uh, this is me. And this is my website. And this is my Facebook page. And this is my telephone number. I'm really sorry. I think I've spelled, uh, I, I, there's a spelling error on the thing. So I apologize for that. Um, so it's, uh, sorry, oops. Um, and um, if you ever get a chance, please go and um, visit our More Than Just Medicine channel. Uh, where we hope to bring you um, lots of good information from different specialists. Um, and uh, if you like this video, please consider sharing it because uh, it means a lot to me. And I'm always, as always, very grateful for all the nice comments uh, that you send me. Uh, thank you so much. Take care.